out of there. Here. Take my sweater. Are you coming out? Okay. Suit yourself. Who are you? Martin Delambre. Where are you going? Montreal. Oh, that's, that's where I wanted to go. Like that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's none of my business. Really? It's not what you think. You see, I've been working for a woman writer. And, well, she's been ill for an awfully long time. And her husband... I just had to get away. What, well, do you want me to take you back and get your things? Oh, no. I couldn't do that. Well, the stores won't be open for hours. Okay. Hop in. We'll see what we can do. When we get to a phone, you'd better call your family. I don't have any family. How about friends? None here. Where are you going to stay in Montreal? Do you have any money? No. Hey, not bad. I'll book you a room in my hotel until you get fixed up. I couldn't do that. Thanks a lot, sir. Come in. All settled? I feel that I shouldn't be here. Well, would you like to call somebody? I told you, there isn't anybody. Well, I'll drive out and get your things. No. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll lend you some money, get yourself some clothes, and pay me when you can. I can't take it. What are you going to do? Get a job. In that dress and tennis shoes? Now, this is just a loan until you can pay me. Now, I've got things to do. And so have you. Did you get that call through to my home yet? No, the Quebec number. Well, would you try it again, please? No, I'll wait. The Delambre residence. Oh, Mr. Martin, I've been expecting your call. I've been to the laboratory, and the new equipment will be ready next Wednesday week. Uh, will you tell Father? Yeah. No, uh, no, I'll stay in Montreal until, uh, until it's ready, and then I'll bring it up with me. Yeah. How is he? I haven't talked to him, only to Mr. Albert. He says he's well, but very tired. Yes, sir. I will. Goodbye. Well? He says he'll stay and pick up the new equipment. I'll tell them in London. Calling G2FRR London. Calling G2FRR London. This is VE3TTF Quebec. Calling G2FRR London.
Are you reading me? Repeat, are you reading me? This is VE3TTF Quebec calling G2FRR London. Are you reading me? Albert! Repeat, are you reading me? Over. Okay, Father, I had it. This is G2FR London. Come in, VE3TTF. Over. How are you copying me, Mr. Albert? Uh, signals 5 and 9, Ty. Did you hear from Martin? He called from Montreal. He's ordered the equipment. He'll bring it here himself a week from Wednesday. Anything else? Uh, that's all, sir. Oh, he wanted to know how his father was feeling. There's nothing the matter with me. I'm fine. Tell him. Could you hear that, Ty? He's fine. I'll tell Mr. Martin. No need to call unless you hear something from him. Yes, sir. Why don't you tell Martin the truth? I don't want to worry him. We're so close to success. If you won't tell him, I will. I won't have anything more to do with the experiment. Three generations of Delambres have devoted their lives to this work. You can't leave us now. I'm entitled to a life of my own. I'm simply asking you to wait. For another three generations? For just a little while. You can marry a girl then and have your family. The teleporter will replace every known means of transportation. I know all about the dream, Father. It's all I've ever heard. But it doesn't work. What about the failures? Judith, Samuels, and Dill. No great advance was ever made without sacrifice. Your grandfather transferred a china saucer from one room to another. Last week, you and Martin teleported me from Quebec to London. Is that failure? Why can I make you understand? Look at your body. Do you call that success? Hey. You haven't finished your medicine. Do you prescribe this sort of medicine for all your patients? Only if they're beautiful. Now I know you're not a doctor. Well, as a matter of fact, I am, but not a medicine. What do you do, Martin? I'm in research. In Montreal? Not anymore. No, we uh, bought a place a couple of hours north of here. Well, we have a full week to ourselves before I have to go back. And I don't want to start it on an empty stomach. I always do what my doctor tells me. <laughs> longest vacation I've had in years. I envy you, Martin. You love your work, don't you? Most of the time. You never talk about your home. What's it like? Oh, it's a great big barn of a place, way out in the country on its own. Sounds wonderfully peaceful. Wonderfully dull. That's why I like to escape every now and again. Do you realize I've been here over a week and haven't even looked for a job? Are you sorry? No, not sorry. Just guilty. It's all your fault. Pat, would you like to come back home with me? As my wife. But you don't know anything about me. You don't know anything about me either. And I don't need to know. If this Patricia Stanley escaped on the 12th, why did he wait until now to report it, Madame Fournier? Oh, is it a private mental institution? We try to annoy the police with our problems as little as possible. You annoy the police a good deal more when you turn a lunatic loose for nine days without a word to anyone. We did not turn her loose, and she is not a lunatic. She simply suffered from what you would call a nervous breakdown, Inspector Rene. 
Suppose you tell me about her. Patricia Stanley was trained as a concert pianist. Her father died when she was a child. The mother was a very ambitious woman who wanted to realize her own hopes in her daughter. A few weeks before she was to make her concert debut, her mother died suddenly. When was this? About a year ago. Without the mother's strength, Patricia became almost helpless. On the night of her first concert, she never got any further than the dressing room. She became a child again. They found her on the floor, weeping hysterically. And it was then she was committed to your institution? Shortly afterwards. And how did she respond to treatment? We felt she was making an excellent recovery. I want you to open Mr. Delambre's door, room 104. I can't. It's not allowed. Uh, 104, you said, miss? Yes. You see, he's been ill, and now he doesn't seem to answer. Ah, Mr. Martin, I'm relieved you're here. Your father needs you. Hi. This is Mrs. Delombre, my wife. It is a privilege to welcome you to this house, Mrs. Delombre. I wish you much happiness here. Thank you very much, Ty. Oh, we'll this be. is a surprise, Mr. Martin. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Ty. We'll be in our room. Oh, uh, the things are in the car. Uh, your father, Mr. Martin? He'd like you to call him immediately. What time? On the hour. Did she say where she was going? No, Inspector. Her address doesn't help very much, does it? Why did she leave? I don't know. Did she have any visitors, any phone calls? No, she spent all her time with the gentleman. Gentleman? The one she came with. They booked in together. He had the room opposite. He left with her this morning. Perhaps his address will be a little more explicit. More 
Martin Delombre. You did that beautifully. I like this room. I hoped you would. I'm sorry my father can't be here to do the honors. When will he be back? Oh, I shall know more when I talk to him later. Do you think he'll like me? Of course he will. Now you get settled. And I'll be back as soon as I can. G2 London. Calling G2 FRL London. This is V3TDF Quebec. How are you copying, Meow? Or oh, uh, five and nine. Am I glad to hear your voice? We've been trying to get you for two days. Oh, just a moment. Here's Father. Martin. Thank God you're back. Did you get the equipment? Yeah, I brought it with me this evening. Hey, what's all the excitement? Well, I don't know how, but the authorities here have found out that I don't have my passport in order. You know what it would mean if I had to explain how I got here without it. I've been hiding in the lab. Now, you've got to get me back to Canada. How long will it take to install the equipment? Well, several hours. But it should be tested. We haven't got time for testing. I must get out today. I can't let you take that risk. Let me decide that. This is G2 FRR London, signing clear. <laughs> that patching? No, I'll give this a fast test first. Yeah, that ought to do it. Switch on the converter. Checked out like a dream. It's five o'clock here, so everybody is still asleep. If we hurry, we can pull the maximum power load from the outside lines. We're ready here, Martin. You're insane to take this kind of a chance. Give us ten minutes, then renew contact. Roger. This is BE3TDF Quebec, signing clear for ten minutes. Martin, I couldn't find you. I searched everywhere and then. Martin, who was that? What are you doing there? Oh, you said you'd come back. I must have been asleep for hours. Darling, there was an emergency. I had to install the new equipment at once. But tonight? I know. I'm sorry. I can't explain in detail. Just believe me, it had to, it had to be done. It was necessary. It's that sort of work. Of course. I'm just being silly. I knew I'd have to share you with your work. 
Will you be much longer? Not long. I'll come as soon as I can. Can't I stay here? Not this time, Pat. Come on. I'll take you to your room. Reintegrate now. Repeat. Reintegrate now. Objective achieved. Get me the scissors tie. Hello, Biden. Father, how are you feeling? Are you all right? Well, what happened to your chest? your chest. Well, without the new equipment, there was some radiation burns, but I'm much better now. Okay, let me see. I must talk to you first. Thank you, Ty. We'd better get you to bed. Martin. Earlier, earlier on the radio, I heard a woman's voice in this laboratory. It wasn't one. No. No, it wasn't. Uh, Ty, would you mind? I'll get your bed ready, sir. It's good to have you home. No, I have to tell you, Father. Still don't know how to say it. In Montreal, I met a girl, and we were married yesterday. That's impossible. 
You can't. It's done, Father. Send her back. You mustn't do this to her. I can't. My God, if you won't understand, who will? I want a life of my own. That's strange. Albert told me the same thing. In those very words. Al? Albert's met a girl. It's all right for him. He doesn't have my problems. Martin, it won't work. What about her parents, her friends? Her parents are dead. She has no friends. No one will come looking for her. I made an appointment with Inspector Shiraz, uh, ex-Inspector Shiraz, really, for this afternoon at four. I do not see what this has to do with finding Patricia Stanley. You will when Inspector Shiraz tells you about the fly. What on earth are you talking about? I thought you might remember. Inspector Shiraz was on the original Delambre case before the family moved from Montreal. So this Martin Delorme has been involved with the police before? Not Martin. His grandfather. Inspector René. I'm not really interested in Martin Delambre, let alone his grandfather. I am only interested in finding Patricia Stanley. Father's here. What, here in the house? Waiting to meet his daughter-in-law. I bet he won't wait much longer. Father. This is Pat. <laughs> Welcome, my dear. You are a pleasant surprise. Thank you. At least we don't have to say we've heard so much about each other that... I was afraid you'd be angry. We should have asked your approval. I've already given it. Gladly. Mr. Martin. Shall we sit down? Did you have a pleasant trip? <laughs> Excellent. I didn't expect to meet you so soon. I thought Martin said you were in London. Well, travel is so much quicker these days. One can get any place almost in a flash. There's someone at the gate. I think I'd better go myself. Anything I can do? Yeah. Keep Patricia entertained until I get back. I'm afraid that's easier said than done. We keep pretty much to ourselves here. I hope you won't find us boring. Oh, not with this lovely piano here. Do you play? Oh, yes. That is, I did, but I'm out of practice. I, uh, I wouldn't use that one if I were you. It really shouldn't be in this room. It's much too damp. Why, oh, it has a lovely tone.
I take the dish. away the blood. I'm Martin Delombre. You wanted to talk to me? I'm Inspector Ronay. What have you done with Patricia Stanley? Who are you? This is Madame Fournier. Miss Stanley never mentioned you? That does not surprise me. Madame Fournier operates the asylum from which Miss Stanley escaped. The girl's mentally ill, Mr. Delambre. We'll have to take her back. So, she did not tell you about that. Where is she? Miss Stanley and I were married yesterday. I do not believe you. I don't care what you believe. I am responsible for Patricia. I have a right to see her. Absolutely not. She's within her rights, Mr. Delambre. Do you have a search warrant? It'll be a simple matter to get one. Madame Fournier was anxious to avoid unnecessary publicity. Inspector Ronnie and Madame Fournier. I told them that Pat and I were married, but they wouldn't believe me. I assure you they are. I'm her father-in-law. I should know. Well, I asked Ty to get me this. If you won't believe me, perhaps you'll believe a certificate of marriage. It's genuine. I think you should know that your daughter-in-law was being treated for a mental ailment. She appears to have made a remarkable recovery since leaving your hands. We will require a full release, of course. You send the papers along in the post, Inspector. We'll sign anything you want. I'd like to speak to Madame Delambre, if I may. I think, Inspector, that my wife has been disturbed enough today. Ty, would you show them out, please?
Darling, they've gone. They won't bother you again. Martin, I saw something. Where? Over there. Hoped you wouldn't go there. I meant to warn you. What is it? They're animals. Part of a research experiment. But that's horrible. You didn't tell me it was that sort of work. Pat, I didn't tell you anything. And you didn't tell me anything. That's what we agreed on. Well, now she's been here, I want to tell you. Not now. First, we'll have a drink. Then we'll have some lunch, and then you'll feel more like talking. Insulted me. I'd have warned you against marrying a scientist. I'm not sorry. The work with animals distresses you, though. I know. I watched you when Martin was explaining. Well, if Martin has to do it, I'm sure it's all right. Until you understand our work better, I suggest that you avoid the animal cages. I will. And thank you for not minding about me. What are you going to do now? Unpack. All right. I've got some work to do with Father. Come down as soon as you're finished, and I'll show you the grounds. All right. Did this start again? I was killed in Montreal. They must have created an imbalance. Neither one of us can afford to be careless, you know that. Martin, this marriage is forcing our hand. We can't work in secrecy much longer. We're not ready. You have to go ahead, ready or not. Why? I think it was Albert that told the London authorities about my passport. I know Al hates her work, but he wouldn't do that. Since he met that girl in London, he's been ready to chuck the whole thing. And now this policeman showing up here. You know how they are. They'll rake over the whole thing again. They'll find some excuse to search the place. Then we'll have to move quickly. You and I have got to go to Montreal today, wind up our financial affairs. Well, I can't leave Pat alone. It'll only take a few hours. You can explain it to her. If we're away as soon as you're fit, we can be back at midnight. Inspector Shara? I'm awake. I'm awake, Martin. There's a telephone call for you. Uh-oh. It's from an Inspector Roney. Oh, I thought he was coming to see me. Hello? Shara, yeah? Roney here, sir. I won't be coming out to see you, after all. I thought you were on to something about the Delambre case. I'm afraid I wasted your time, Inspector. The Delambre case was a bit before my day, and I had been hoping you'd give me the background. It turns out I don't need it. Why not? Well, why did Delambre marry this girl, Patricia Stanley? But that's impossible. Martin Delambre is married already, has been for years. Well, you mean was married? Still is, as far as I know. Well, he could be divorced, or she may have died. My interest in the Delambre case is well known. If there'd been a death or a divorce in the family, someone would have told me. I'll check it, sir. What can you tell me about her? Martin met her at the university. She's a brilliant girl, fine pianist, too. Her name is um, Judith.
Come, Judas. It's time to go now. Martin, it was real. Juan was there. You don't believe me, do you? You better have Juan up here. I'll get her. Martin, you've got to believe me. I did see it. It was... Honey, sometimes when you're upset... I was wide awake. I remember everything. I put on my robe. I couldn't find my slippers. And... Juan, when you saw my wife in the conservatory and had bare feet, why didn't you help her back to bed? I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. I was in the conservatory, but I didn't see your wife. Was anyone playing the piano tonight? No. She's lying. <laughs> I saw her! Patricia, please! Stop it! I'll make her tell the truth. Don't you understand? She's lying. She was there. With that thing. Martin, I won't stand for this. Please make her tell the truth. I think you'd better go. You're all against me. You won't believe anything I say. Pat! Patricia, no one is against you. We just know that you're wrong. You couldn't have seen anything. There's nothing like that in our house. Now, you've had a pretty bad nightmare. Well, I'm sorry, but you'd better pull yourself together. I'll see you both in the morning. Good night, Father. Good night. Oh, Martin, I'm sorry. Come on. What is happening, Martin? Happening? I know I wasn't dreaming, but that means that horrible thing is in the house. And that can't be true. So what is happening to me? Am I... Pat. Pat. It was only a nightmare. You must believe me. You must trust me. However real anything may seem. I do trust you, Martin. I love you. You believe me? I love you. You will not let Judith out again, except by Mr. Martin's order or mine. Is that understood? He will never let her out now, that girl here. Well, Juan, thank you very much for your support last night. Did she take her tablets? Yeah. She's asleep for the rest of the day. How does she feel? She thinks she's going mad. Might be better if I just simply told her the truth. You can't. I can't stand by and let that happen to her. Good God, Father. Hasn't she been through enough? Martin, we can help her. We can help ourselves, too, at the same time. We can save everything we've worked for. And we can show her there is no creature in our house. But we've got to have strength. Go on. 
We've got to teleport Samuels and Dill to London immediately. And we've got to get rid of all evidence before that detective comes back. What'll happen in London? Albert will dispose of them. He won't do it. Then I'll have to give him no alternative. Remember, Albert is in this as deep as all of us. You've got it all figured out, haven't you, Father? Well, they're no longer human. They're just suffering animals. And you'll have to show Patricia the empty cages to convince her, you know. You haven't mentioned Judith. Do we teleport her? Since you'll be remarried, I think that decision is up to you. Better take it easy, I'll handle it. Mm -hmm. That was the original laboratory in which Martin's grandfather made his first experiments. He disintegrated an object in one glass case and reintegrated it in the other. Ultimately, of course, he had to find out if he could do it with a human being. And he tried it on himself. Tragically, yes. But uh, he failed to notice there was a common house fly in the case with him. And when he reintegrated, he was like that. It's unbelievable. I didn't believe it myself. When his wife told me, I thought she was deranged. And then I saw it. You saw it? The fly? Yes. That was the beginning of the curse of the Delambres, the curse of the fly, you may say. Later, his son reversed the experiment and put the fly and the monster in the glass case and restored them to their original condition. Oh, no effects? No deformities? None that you can see. Flies, you know, have a brief span of life, usually dying off in the cold of the first winter. Martin and his father are affected by cold and also at times by a premature and very rapid aging. They have to have regular injections of a special serum. The other brother, Albert, is quite normal.
Calling G2FRR London. Come in, G2FRR. This is VE3 GDF. Over. Any answer? No. Take the cabinet panel, will you? Later on. Calling G2FRR London. Calling G2FRR London. This is VE3TDF. Come in G2FRR. Keep trying. We must reach him. Calling G2FRR London. Calling G2FRR London. This is VE3TDF. Come in G2FRR. This is G2FRR London. Come in VE3TDF. Where the hell have you been, Al? Here, let me speak with him. Albert. This is your father. Now listen carefully. We've had an emergency here. I want you to reintegrate immediately. Do you understand? Why did you disintegrate? We can't talk on the radio. I want you to dispose of it. If you can't, wait till Martin and I get there. Check your radio every hour. Everything we've worked for depends on you. We'll contact you later in the day. This is VE3 TTF signing clear. them both through. How will they reintegrate? I don't know, Martin. A mass of cells, probably. But easier to kill than an animal, even for Albert. Will I become like you? We're scientists. We have to do things we hate that even sicken us. Telephone for you, sir. It's Inspector Ronnie.
No, no, uh, that won't be necessary. You don't have to come here. If you insist, we'll both come to Montreal. Yes, Inspector, immediately. What's wrong to talk to us about? I don't know. He wouldn't say, Martin. That? That. What was the picture, darling? A woman. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. It was a dream. It's fading already. Now, you settle down and take that tablet. And by the time you're awake, Father and I will be back. Where are you going? To Montreal, for a few hours. Her name was Judith. That means something, doesn't it? It said, to Martin, all my love, always Judith. Well, there was a Judith once. But believe me, there's no photograph here. There hasn't been for a long, long time. Well, then how do I know? Am I going mad, Martin? Oh, Pat. Pat. Do I see creatures in photos that don't exist? And if they aren't here, I must be mad, mustn't I, Martin? No. 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 Tell me. You did see her, at the piano. It was Judith. That lovely photo. One of our experiments went wrong. I want to tell you the truth. It isn't animals. I'm not some kind of a monster, Pat. I'm doing this because this machine could be a great and wonderful gift. To be able to transport people and equipment to any part of the world in a matter of seconds. Think what it could mean. Wherever there's a flood, or a disaster, or an earthquake, we could get the best surgeons, the best engineers, the best equipment there in a matter of seconds. Suffering that that would save. Isn't that worth the occasional failure? Judith Delambre can't have disappeared into thin air. You must have some idea where she went. None at all, Inspector. There wasn't any attempt made to find her. My son's wife left him, Inspector, of her own free will. Martin got a Mexican divorce, and we haven't heard of her since. You have the papers, naturally. Not with us. I'd like to see them tomorrow. Do you recognize these two men? Well, yes. Samuels? Dale. Where are they now? They work for us. 
as lab assistants. They were exchange students. When their terms ran out, they returned home. I have their addresses at the house. I still hear from them. That will be very helpful. I don't mind telling you we've been unable to contact either one. We're only too glad to help, Inspector. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, then. You can depend on it. Goodbye, Inspector. Yes, Inspector? See if Judge Gerard is in his chambers, will you? I need a search warrant. She's in your bedroom. Killed her one. Why? I don't know. It was an accident. I... 
Come, we'll go now. No time. The police will call it murder. They'll have to prove it first. Mr. Martin will never forgive us. We'll say she ran away. Does that girl know? Will you help? We'll be ready in a minute. In there. How long has it been since Judith got away? Fifteen minutes, perhaps twenty. Why are you all standing about talking? Why don't you look for her? There's no time for that. For all we know, the police may be on their way. You two better pack. You can take one of the cars. Oh, Ty, Martin will need you before you go. He'll call you. I can't bring her to. Just as well. She's in shock. Nothing serious. Gotta let her go. We've gotta get away and leave her. I have no right to marry her. We can't leave her, Martin. Not now that you've told her. It'd ruin us. It'd be the end of all of this. We've got to teleport her to London. No. It's your one chance for a normal life, Martin. If you love her and she loves you, that's the way she'd want it. It's too dangerous. I can't risk it. I'll go first. If I'm all right, there's no risk in sending her. Ty will teleport you out before he leaves. Albert, listen to me. You've got to help us. The police will be here any minute. No. I'm finished. Father, you're not God. You're not even human. You murdered those men, and you made me a murderer, too. Every great scientific advance is made at the cost of human lives. Success justifies small defeats. Small defeats? Do you call Judith a small defeat? Or Samuels? Or Dill? I take full responsibility for that. You didn't know what you were doing. I know what I'm doing now. I'm leaving. I've had as much as I can stand. Here. You burn these, Father. Let me talk to you. Al? Al, I don't know how you feel about me. If you don't want to help me, I'll stay here. But you've got to save your father. You can't let them hold him up in court as a monster. He's insane, Martin. We can't put this power in his hands. Time's run out, Al. I'll give you five minutes to prepare, and then I'm sending him through. Count down from five. Come on and stop. Wait! Think he'll do it? What choice has he got? He really thinks we're monsters, you know? Wish to God I could be as certain as you are that he's wrong.
calling G2FR on London. Calling G2FR on London. This is B3DDF. Come in G2FR on London. Calling G2FR on London. Bottom wing. Calling G2FR on London. Bottom wing. Listen to me. Starting countdown at five. Repeat, starting countdown at five. Martin, for God's sake, wait, listen to me. Five, four, three, two, one. Reintegrate now. Repeat. Reintegrate now. Al? <laughs> Al, are you there? <laughs> Calling G2FR <laughs> London. Calling G2FR London. This is BEC TDF Quebec. Reintegrate now. Repeat. Reintegrate now. Calling G2FR London. Calling G2FR London. This is VECTDF Quebec. G2FR on London. Calling G2FR on London. This is V3TDF Quebec. Come in G2FR London. Calling G2FR on London. Calling G2FR on London. half a dozen men as soon as you can. And put out an APB on the Chinese couple. You'll find the report on my desk. The last seen heading for Montreal in a 1963 blue Chevrolet. Right.
Operator. Operator. Operator, please help me. This is Delon Ray. Who are you? I'm Inspector Ronay. It's fun. He's... Where is he? I don't want to leave you alone, Mrs. Delambre. Do you think you're strong enough? What number did you want, caller? Are you there, caller? What number did you want? Wait here. 